What's going on, TAP? That's right. Once again, coming at you. This is the Apocalypse Project, chilling my mans. What's up, Rev? How you doing, man? It is still November 27th today. Yeah. We are recording this, and we got <laughs> our good friend, Ariel. We, we, man, this has been... Okay, so... This is awesome. I we record it. these in one night, and... I'm going to tell you what, tonight has just been a, just a wealth of good yeah. conversation. Yeah. Um, it, it's, uh, we had talked about, actually, we had talked about recently that it'd be good to get individuals on the podcast that don't think exactly like us. And yeah, have that's healthy. Opinions. We need to yeah. have a healthy balance. Yeah. So, you know, thank otherwise, you. Thank you yeah, for that. Appreciate we, it. I can't wait to go forward. But right now. Oh, to completely man. switch gears, oh, I wanted to man. ask you about because one of the one of our big things it's like a, I don't know if you caught our Halloween special, but we had actually a, uh, a, a, a I, I guess I call her the ghost doctor, but she actually <laughs> has her PhD in uh, paranormal studies, and she's actually cool. she runs a, a paranormal uh, exploration exploration yeah. group on yeah. Facebook and in Las Vegas. So we're planning on a trip, taking a trip down to see her and uh, talk to her. Uh, I can't wait. To in do person that. uh we, we, that's cool so anyways oh, i got the chills dang <laughs> heather <laughs> you gave me the chills girl oh man so nice. uh so anyway so we're, we're th that was a very insightful show and we had alex you, you remember alex uh yeah yeah um, we had him uh, before we had talked to um heather and he was sharing some of his paranormal yeah. experience and again we find an experience yeah. i don't necessarily like i said i i, I don't believe it yet only because I haven't experienced. Oh man! So Be careful I what you am ask a for, man. To a degree, but enlighten me and convince me. No, oh, no, no, no. Okay. <laughs> no, but it, you, honestly, I think firsthand experience is the best. But right. <laughs> right. <laughs> the ones that always creep me out are the ones that make sense later. Yeah. And that's oh, yeah. kind of what has to do with mine. When I was a kid, um, we lived in this apartment complex, and it was so big. It had a huge elevator. And mind you, I was like three. I've always been very sensitive to spirit things. Mm. And um, okay, I and like so it. I would often have see people walking in white no. gowns. No way. <laughs> Wait, hold on. In the hallways. The hallways uh, are so huge, right? I hope and the lights the, in here stay on. No, no, no. It just looked like somebody was walking by in, in a, in a gown, nightgown or something. Oh, like a moo moo. And um, <laughs> I never paid any attention to it. No one like came up to me and was like spooky or anything. I would just see people walking down the hallway, and it wasn't anything weird. It would oh, just seem normal. That's crazy. Well, I would also have several dreams of the same reoccurring nightmare since I was a little kid. We lived there, of me jumping off the balcony and landing in the tree. Crazy, right? Dang. Well. Eventually, I tell my mom, and I'm like, hey, like, you know, remember when you used to live in that apartment? And I start telling her. Right. She goes, oh, yeah, that apartment used to be, like, a psych ward. Oh, shit. <laughs> and I was like, Whoa. what? He goes, yeah, it was like a convalescent-type place where people would live. And I was like, do you know that I've Dang. seen several people, like, walk down the hallways in, like, white gowns? Because I just oh, thought it was like, Now that all makes, <laughs> yeah, now it, go, it oh. makes sense. And, and wow. why and why all the elevators were so big for patient transport like it makes sense so much now but it's so crazy oh, to so, and the like, music just stopped like what the, is that paranormal oh, see, what see? The <laughs> and okay. so like and that's oh, just God. like one of many weird experiences that i've had but wait how old um, were you during all that i was i was like three when this was happening you remember that you, do you remember? oh yeah it oh was yeah a i remember three get memory yeah I, don't, I vaguely remember yeah. three and uh, one last one, I'll just throw this in. We used to live at my grandma's house in Hayward and um, down the hallway, I would always see this huge spider. What? I recently told my mom that I, I, I would always have like visions of this huge spider in that hallway. And she was like, I used to have that nightmare when I was a kid and lived there. Dang. And Never I'm scared of spiders. About it before. <laughs> I can't do spiders. Just, it's just so, the spider right, in the, right above the bathroom, same thing. And so like, I don't, I think spirits are real, good ones, bad ones. You could call yeah, it vibes, feelings. Right. No, um, I'm with you on that. If, if you're keen to like that, like to that sensitivity or not, it's really up to you. I do do like uh, smudging and I clean mm -hmm. my house and um, I totally believe in cleaning the energy and like praying, like, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter what it is in every, anybody's form, but um, I totally think this stuff's real and I think it's like, 
Okay. I choose not to tap into it because I don't want to go somewhere that I can't come back from. So. Yeah, I'm good. I'm straight. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, I, you know. Okay, Man. so really quick, so these individuals that you were seeing walking down the hall, um, yeah, like was it at a certain time of day that you would see it, or was it was it like spontaneous, or was it just like yeah, at, at sporadic times? Um, so I wasn't in school at the time, and I would go play with the neighbor kid. Um, you so sure I he was alive? Or she was, you sure he was a real kid? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, th I hope. Yeah. Uh, and um, every time I leave my house, I would see somebody walk across the other hallway. Oh, snap. So it was every time I opened my door to go outside. It wasn't like, and I never put it like that it was like a thing, but like putting descriptions on what I saw was like oh shit that like totally like lines up in a weird way yeah that's crazy and, you know i don't like to put too much thought into it but like i it was one of the first first <laughs> core memory for me <laughs> as far as when it comes to like the spiritual stuff but oh man um, definitely had seen others and uh definitely seen some weird stuff in church so wait in church oh man yeah. out of all places uh, wait 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 i want to i want to ask about that so like what are you talking about like like church like what have you seen like is it like people falling over, levitating? No. I have. Levitating. I swear to God. I swear to God. Like levitating. someone levitating? Okay, mind you, I was like eight, okay? Oh, shit. <laughs> and it was like one of those like hardcore Pentecostal churches. And I swear to God, this lady was having like a, a bitch fit. Like it, she was like possessed or something. <laughs> but they're they're all speaking in tongues and going crazy, right? She was off the floor. And I, and they're obviously they're like, you know, I rebuke you, duh, duh. but like, this is in front of like a heck of people. Oh, snap. And you're like, what the heck? I was totally afraid of um, that stuff. And then eventually, like, I've learned to therapy and compartmentalize, like, okay, there's some stuff that I don't know what's real or not, but I've learned to like gauge things for my own self yeah. and just kind of like, you know, I, I really can't put a truth to everything that happens in church because you know people put a lot of emotions and stuff and um i just don't fully believe it when it comes to that stuff and if you really want to watch a good show that has to do with that things uh it's called evil um basically this priest goes around and getting um possessive calls and he brings skeptics with him oh snap that do do we should hit things. him up, Rev, and we should go yeah, with him one time. Yeah, he brings them with him to just to decide whether it's a mental illness, like uh, a psychologist, and all yeah, stuff, or if there's something like that's not like <laughs> oh, scientifically sick. proven. It's a pretty good show. I like it because it really does like open things up. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I mean, know. it's a little weird for you know. I I don't know. I just think there's well. Okay, so when when what when was the last? paranormal experience Which is like yesterday <laughs> <laughs> all right before you called yeah <laughs> uh, the la so paranormal i think it sounds like weird like as in scary you know um but i think the i really want to call it like a spiritual moment i guess i don't know yeah uh i i um tried dmt not that long ago oh nice <laughs> okay <laughs> so you're in the and, spirit uh, world yeah <laughs> yeah bro it was cool well, yeah uh, basically I was there and I, with the people and I saw their color auras that were around them. It's right. weird to say now, but I looked up the colors later and it super coincided with like who they are as a person. Yeah, for sure. And it, that was trippy to me, but it was like, I was like, man, I got this again. Well, you know what? I, it was I, just like, cool, I guess. Well, I, I honestly believe, and I'm not, I'm not the only one. There's a lot of spiritualists out there that believe in the spirit world, right? You know, this yeah. other dimension, if you will. But yeah. psychedelics do take you into that other dimension. They they open your mind in such a way yeah. that it, it allows you to to open that door to get into that other that other realm, if you will. But there's times when people come back from DMT trips or, or acid trips, and they have a whole new skill set that they never had before. That oh, absolutely, spirit, uh, yeah, like I think their spirit even, guide showed them yeah. or something. You know, yeah. I think if I like continue to to do it more often, there will probably be different things, but. Uh, looking at like the studies of psychedelics and DMT, people who've had like manic depressive disorders, mm -hmm. 
have completely did yep. a 180 no medicine yep, just exactly. having a one-time dmt experience even even with so acid I, on I totally think it kicks into some gear yeah here. well it's they, they, they've done studies with acid well now it's illegal mm -hmm. to even make it i think there's only one one research lab in america that can make acid legally and even yeah. then it's at a, such a small dose but there's been there's been proof there's been a scientific study on people that had um uh, like addictions, you know, alcoholism, drug addiction, yeah. and, and those things. Uh, but then they would microdose them on acid and slowly step mm -hmm. it up, but they wouldn't give them enough for them to trip, you know, in the beginning. Yeah. Okay, wait a minute. So I also did like shrooms, and that was cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm assuming, I, or I'm assuming we're, we're talking about that. That's what, uh, what, what'd you say it was? DM, DMT? It's DMT. called DMT. Check out um, Jeff Rogan's yeah. uh, DMT. It, it's a experience. chemical your brain makes uh, wait, right before Joe you die. Joe Rogan? Joe yeah. Rogan. <laughs> Did you say yes. She said Jeff, Jeff Rogan. Rogan. She did. I'm like, huh? I'm like, Jeff? You know my that brain, guy. Yeah, you know the you thing. You know the thing. My brain, <laughs> my brain locked up. I'm like... <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Jeff. I'm like, I'm like uh, is this paranormal right now? No. <laughs> it's paranormal. But, yeah. Okay, so... So, do you believe that they're... Oh, wait, how connected can taking psychedelics and the paranormal experience... How, like... Yeah, I would have figured that'd be completely different. Do you do you not see it that way? I, no, it's I, just more I of a spiritual don't think it's thing. That different. Yeah. I think uh, it brings you to a place that you don't normally get to sit down. And this is people say that meditation could take you to like a more paranormal place mm -hmm. or a psychedelic place. And I think it's just an area of our minds. Our mind is the pow most powerful organ in our body that could world. block trauma. Yeah. And well, that that's why when when you get that's why when you get hurt, there. you don't remember what the pain felt like. All you know is no. that it hurt. That's a survival that's mechanism. Brain. Yeah, this is. But you know, um, what, what what even opening up your third eye, your pineal gland, you yes. can you can open Sounds up dirty. Yeah, right. It, and, it you know what? <laughs> and it's like an acorn shape, or or, or you know, the, the ancients used to use a pine cone to just, you know, or and things yes. you know, in different chakras. Yes, and in, in Hindu religion and, 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 and all across the world, people they knew yes. this third eye was there. And science yeah. poo pooed it for the longest time until modern times. They're like, oh wow, there actually is a gland that looks like the the eye of Horus in your head yes. and here. Yes. You know, it's literally a third eye, and 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 it's connected and connected in such a way that is technically a third eye, but it's in our mind. And when you take psychedelics, it opens you up to that spirit. That's why when they say you're on that trip and you're seeing all these colors and patterns and, and you know what, there are a lot of numer numerologies involved in all those, those patterns. And this, it's weird. You, trust me. Do yes. another trip. You, 100%. Yeah. Well, anyway, they you, say you're excited about it, dude. I'm like, yo, we're about to dab right now. <laughs> hey, bro. We're about, hey, I think I'm going to have to go over and bring you guys. Some yeah, stuff. let's do it, man. <laughs> well, they, they say, um, that we're actually gazing into that spirit world. Yeah. Like literally looking at what what's yeah. after this life. So there yeah. is a dim so basically what you're saying is that there is a dimension that is accessible, but you have to be in an not an altered state. No, of you mind. just got to be perceptive to it. But if you can't open your third eye, because there's yeah. exercises you can do without psychedelics and open your pineal gland. Yeah, just uh, like meditation exercises. <laughs> yeah, or de decalcifying it. That's why they say fluoride <laughs> fluoride calcifies it and it turns it off. Yeah, really. Yes, and well, that's why water, I think the water in Hayward I grew up with is the most has the water super high fluoride levels so i wouldn't be surprised that that's yeah. why i'm more keen to that stuff well you know fluoride in like a lo almost every other country is classified as like a class three poison or something it's weird that yeah. they give it to us here okay know? so I, I i agree because i have been in meditative states where okay. where, where, where where i have felt like I wasn't in the place that I was. Right. You know, yeah. but of yeah. course, you know, in my tradition where you meditate, it's not like you don't get in all all fours so or you don't get in the lotus position and you're not chanting. You're just sitting, you're reflecting. In in, in the Christian tradition, when you meditate, you, you think on the Lord. You think yes. on God, you think of the word, and it kind of like alters you. But so there it so I do believe that there is some legitimacy to you saying that about the third eye. I do believe that exists. No, yeah, I do yeah, believe there's there. a way so, yeah, of yeah. seeing the things that are that are there the that thing, are not seen with yeah. the, the normal <laughs> yeah. eyes or felt with the normal senses. I yeah. I do believe yeah. that. Uh but it's a seven. I sense, just didn't know about like psychedelics. It's like if you meditated and then you took a psychedelic, would that that would that that sense of would that be the same? It would, but see, the thing is, with, with when you take a psychedelic, it jump it jump starts that part of your brain. Yes, it because it, so a lot it, of times it gives you like you're a, a fast track to, to tap that. Into that. Yeah, it gives you I that mean, fast track way into that where yeah. because you know when you're meditating and you're doing these chants and all that, that's just preparing your body. 
It's it's you're focusing on your breathing. You're becoming self aware first of all. You have to be self aware, and then you start to open up. And and and, and so all these some people do it for what, more spiritual purposes. Um, like you ever hear people going like to do ayahuasca and all that stuff. Right. Well, they there's a thing like yes, people do it recreationally for DMT, and it does help on their mental illnesses and all that stuff. Or it's just fun. Yeah. <laughs> but on a more spiritual side, it's used for. Um, People do no sex, no meat, and no sugar for three days before you do DMT. And supposed to, and you th and what you do is you're supposed to like think of the thing that you want to deal with mm. for yourself, and you're putting your your body pre doing the DMT into that state of this is something that I want to deal yeah. with or whatever. Right. So it can be used for that. It's just the vehicle that could get you to whatever place you want to get to quickly. Well, you know what's crazy? Uh, almost everybody that I've known that's taken psychedelics usually come out of it with a found respect for a higher power, whatever that may yeah. be. And they usually yeah. end up going to church or they end up getting saved and they end up living a life in a spiritual sense. And it's usually within a church they find or after this. And there's been I, I knew two people in my life that were like dead on god don't exist that's bs that's bullshit no that whatever that how can god exist they they, yeah. they took some some uh psychedelic came back full-fledged christians it's like that they're like dude yeah, we well, believe I mean, there is something over there you know? to the christian the christian aspect i mean when when uh saw encountered that light you know he was like a christian killer and all this stuff like historically yeah and all of a sudden he changes his life and becomes paul like who writes a lot of the books one third, of the Bible. One third yeah, of the Yeah, and, and you're just like, wow, like this person who had a an big experience. Encounter. Yeah, had an and experience. And so whether yep. what, what, whether you that's what I'm saying, like I feel like the words are interchangeable, but the experience can be valid on so many yeah, levels. Yeah. And it really just depends on what you want to tap into because yeah. like that's why people fast. Uh, right. when and you're praying for like twenty one days or whatever, because you want to pray for something. Um, so whether you're doing it for any religion purposes or internal spiritual purpose or to see if it will help you in some way, um, I think it, it is a vehicle that you could tap into if you want to or you're not. Oh, yeah. I'm a, I'm me, a firm believer in it. To try, um, and like it was it was really cool to connect the people in my life with like a color yeah. that was so crazily just matched who they were. And these are close people to me. So to know that like even in a different sector like it wasn't like i was seeing them with weird faces or anything it's just like their their aura colors right it just was like a, a telling sign like um when even when you think about horoscopes like i'm an aries and there's so many characteristics that i check off as an aries um but do i believe in all of astrology no you know do i believe in some things because it kind of like just validates like oh that right. kind of makes sense for what yeah. that is so I don't know. It's just different. It, I recommend it for yeah. Anybody, and you know, you know what? I what, it, it's that self awareness that it brings to you. Even though you feel yeah. so disconnected, you're so self aware of you as a who you are as a being on a on a deep deep level that f yeah. supersedes this flesh. And it's a, an experience that you just have to have for yourself, man. I mean, it, yeah. Maybe we'll maybe we'll all get together we'll, we'll, <laughs> because it, what is it like a fifteen? It's like a it's like, it, like a fifteen it. minute high or something, isn't it? Like, it's, it, it it really, it, it really is about 15 minutes. Yeah. Um, so you do it like in a quiet area and what it does scientifically, it floods your brain with like so much like serotonins and stuff that you start to see like colors be vibrant and stuff and kind of you get whatever you want out of it. It's not a negative thing. It's not like doing streams where it could kind of go yeah. bad a little bit or like acid. Where you have to go <laughs> yeah. through an emotional. Yeah. Where you're not just tripping on acid all hell. Oh around. my God. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's 15 minutes. You'll feel very euphoric afterwards. It's not, you're not going to be high after, can't yeah. like drive your car or whatever. But is is this, it. is this a, a man-made chemical thing? Or no, just... your brain produces this it right organic. before you die. Isn't, isn't DMT so that. The man-made, the man-made uh, is, would be mescaline acid mm -hmm. and um, the DMT is the organic. So it's like fused into a vape. Okay. But isn't DMT the chemical your brain produces before you die, yes. right? Right before you die. Yeah. Yes. Right before you die. Yeah. 
I know it sounds scary, but it I mean, prepares you for the afterlife, man. It really does. Yeah. So well, you, okay. you, if you want to know what I wish you would have let in with that because I would have had a lot more questions on that. <laughs> now I'm having some research because we are running out of time. Yeah, but that is, I did not know that. Yeah. That your brain produces DMT right before you die. So it, basically, unless when you, you take die DMT, suddenly, but if you're dying slowly or you're bleeding out, well, or yeah, of course. When people say they see the light. Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah, that's your brain producing oh. these chemicals. Oh. I got. Because oh, we got another topic to, to talk mind about. Into it lights. Well, okay. Thank you. For, I mean, yeah. Well, it's the season of lights, so we'll have to pick up this top. Maybe we'll make this our Christmas special. Oh, that'd be tight. <laughs> yeah, man. We all drop some DMT. We'll be on. Oh man, Ariel, thank you for the I'm lightning down. conversation. You're awesome. You're awesome. I like <laughs> and it. And the invitation, apparently. Yeah, let's do it, man. <laughs> so, anyways, I'll this. Take the <laughs> <laughs> oh, in studio guest. Yeah, you gotta be your in studio guest, and maybe we'll. Well, Eric. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Wait, it's not illegal, is it? I don't know. <laughs> 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 we'll look into that before. <laughs> we'll say this it is a synthetic version. Test if you're asking that. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, like this is a synthetic version of it. So, we swear we're not really. So anyways, Ariel, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining yeah, us. Awesome, uh, it's awesome, been man. Great Beautiful. conversations. Uh, we got to have you back on again. For the Seasons of Light. Yeah. <laughs> Season of Light special. <laughs> anyway, so be this has been the uh, oh, Pockets man. Projects. I've been your boy, Sir Rev the Servant, Play B. And our thanks to our special guest, Ariel, all the way from San Jose, California. This has been the Apocalypse Project Podcast. You have been tapped.